So here's the second half of the multiple choice for the August 2018 Algebra 1 regions. So for question 13, it's looking to see which of polynomial is equivalent to 2 times y plus z. So we've got y here, we've got z here, and those are going to go in for the corresponding letters. And then we're just going to kind of simplify this and see what we get. So I'm going to zoom in over here. So, to, so y plus z, so let me do some erasing here. So I want to do, I'm going to do the, the adding first because it says y plus z, and then we double the whole thing. So y plus z, so 3x cubed. There's no other x cubes, so it would be just 3x cubed. And then x squared plus x squared would be 2x squared. And then, let's see, a minus 12 and a minus 5 would be minus 17. That's y plus z. So then 2 times it would just be doubling everything. So 6x cubed plus 4x squared minus 34. And there it is, twice 1. Moving on to the next. So we've got a survey, you trying to pick one, okay. Relative frequency that a male prefers to ski. So we're looking at this one trying to figure out, okay, what frequency of males prefer skiing? So of the 60 males, it says that 45 prefer to snowboard and then 22 of the females prefer to ski. And then it says, let's see, total, you trying to pick one. So 60 males, so we can make a little table here. So male, female, and this is snow versus ski. So there's 60 total male. And then if I do total here, we may not need that, but that's okay. Uh, 45 said that they picked snowboarding. So some subtraction here says that that would be 15. And then 22 of the 60 females, 60, uh, preferred to ski. This doesn't actually even matter. Uh, that would be 38 over here. So now we have that part of it. Sorry, 38. Okay, so relative frequency that a male prefers to ski. So out of our total 60, what many how many chose skiing would be 15. So 15 out of 60. So we're talking about just taking that fraction and I'm gonna go here in my calculator, 15 divided by 60 to get a decimal. Oh, I typed it wrong, sorry. Divided by 60 is one fourth, which is 0 0.25. So relative frequency really means out of a total that we're given, how many of them choose something. So it's a little bit tricky how the wording is. So, but it says that a male chose to ski. That's why the male is the total. So the total number of males is 60 and then 15 out of the 60 to get that proportion and to get that relative frequency, which is why it's choice two. Okay, moving on here to the next. Let me slide this down. Here we go. Uh, number 15. So this is a piecewise function. There are two pieces, as you can tell. So what should the, how should the point be on x value of 3? So x value of 3 is included on this part. It is not included in this part. So we're looking to see, okay, well, what's going on here? So at 3, you plug 3 in for x there, that would be 15. So 315 would be a closed circle, whereas the other part would be 3 squared plus 4, which is 9 plus 4, which is 13. That would be an open circle. So this one's closed, and 313 is open because it's not included at that 3 in that piece. So closed circle at 315, and then open circle at 313, which is why this is choice 4. Closed circle, open circle. Okay, number 16. So which equation can be used to determine the zeros of the functions? Looking at these options here, um, I can tell it's going to have 2x in there somewhere, which, which makes sense um, because we want to figure out how to factor this in order to get the zeros. Um, and if you're looking at these two options, I don't think it's either one of those two because those aren't in factored form and you would need it in factored form in order to solve. So I'm going to just kind of ignore those two. To factor this one, we can do the different methods. We can, we can just do a, kind of like the guess and check method, we usually call it. Um, so we know it has to be 2x and x to get 2x squared. So 2x times x. And then think about, okay, what well, has to multiply to negative 3 in order to also add to 1? But it gets doubled by the 2x. Whatever gets put here is going to get doubled when this gets distributed. So we have to be really careful how we do this. 
So if we try doing, let's see, so we want to add to one, we want to multiply to three, so it's got to be one and three. One of them is going to get doubled, which means that the one should go here, because otherwise, if you put a three here, that would be a six and one, and that wouldn't make any sense. We can't, can't do that. It's got to be a one there, and the three would go here. And if you want to add to a positive one, that means that the three should be positive, and the minus one should be or the one should be negative in order to make this 3x minus 2x, which is the 1x we had, which I've scribbled over 15 times now. Um, the other method to do this, so that's obviously choice two. The other method is to use what I call uh, factoring by grouping. So, or a times c method, I usually call it that too. Um, so a times c, so taking the leading coefficient a, b would be one and c would be negative three. So a times c would be two times negative three which is negative six. And then just think, what are two numbers that multiply to negative six that add to the B, which is one. So that would be how you kind of split this up, the factoring by grouping. So for that, it would be three and negative two in order to multiply to negative six and add to one. So that tells you how to split this. So two X squared plus three X minus two X minus three. So this is how I split the one X we had originally using these two parts, which seems kind of random, um, but that is that is why it works because of this little A times C method, that little trick helps you figure out how to split it up. Because now we can just do GCF of each half. So X times two X plus three, and you've got to get two X plus three over here as well so that this is um, actually able to be factored. So to do that, you got to pull out a negative one and that becomes the two X plus three times the other factor, which is just these two parts put together. And obviously that is the same answer we already had, so we're good. Um, you'll see though, it, it almost has it here. This almost looks like that could be it, but that's not, that's not the same thing. That's why that's wrong. Okay, moving on here. So we're trying to figure out this one here, looking at an equation, the function says uh, about the dogs in the, in the shelter. The daily expenses, so average of this much on food per dog. So I'm guessing X is the number of dogs at the shelter, right? If it's 240 per dog, X is going to be the number of dogs. That makes sense. Uh, not the number of volunteers. They're not paying money for food for volunteers, so it can't be that one. Um, and then for looking at this here, what else? 30 represents total expenses per day. Um, no, it's not the total expenses per day. It's the initial amount. The Y-intercept is always the beginning amount. Okay, if you're thinking about um, y equals b plus mx or mx plus b, b is where it begins at the y-intercept. And then m is how it moves, which is the, the slope, the rate of change. So it can't be the total expenses. This doesn't make any sense. It's the um, non-food expenses, the other somehow their initial amount of expenses they have on top of the food expenses, which is why it's choice one and four. All right, moving on here. So this one, wow, this looks kind of interesting. Um, so if you're looking at this one, you probably would get freaked out right away like I, I kind of am, to be honest, because uh, we've got a Y here and we've got an X squared and another X. So you're probably like, whoa, how do we solve this, right? Um, what I would do is I would get it into a way that looks more familiar to me. So I would get it into Y equals form. So that's like our typical kind of our function notation, but just not F of X. So I would get this solved for y. So 3y plus 2 equals x squared minus 5x plus 17. So I would get rid of the 2 first. That's a really easy first step. Uh, 3y equals x squared minus 5x uh, plus 15. And then the interesting part here is we're going to have to get rid of the 3 by dividing everything by 3, which is going to make it really, you know, interesting. Is this, this is not something we want to factor. Uh, or really deal with too much if we don't have to. So now I'm looking at it like, hmm, where am I going to go with this? So you've got a graphing calculator, so that's what I would do next. But this is not going to be great without a calculator. I would just make a, a graph of this, and what I can do is I can actually just do a fraction and do the whole thing divided by 3. So I'm going to do x squared minus 5x plus 15 all on top, and then all divided by 3 on the bottom, which takes care of each part being divided by 3. And then we get this quadratic, which is not surprising. We see the x squared, and it'll be quadratic. And then do control T here. I'm gonna to go to my table and look at the numbers. So negative two, 10 is negative two, 
10. Eh, close, but not quite. So that's got to be it. Uh, let's make sure the other ones are. So negative 1, 7. Um, so that actually, I read this backwards at first, sorry. It wants which one is not in the solution set, which is why it has to be actually choice 1, because that one was close, but not quite. So the other one should be in the solution set. So negative 1, 7, you can see they're in my table, is in the solution. Uh, 2, 3 is also in the table. And 5, 5, we're hoping, oh, there it is. So this is a great one to do on the calculator too because you have to figure out which one's not true. So if you were to plug them all in, it would kind of take some time if you, obviously the first one doesn't work, so you could just do that. But, you know, there's different ways of looking at it. If it was the last option and you had to test all, other, all three other ones, it would take some time. So the calculator is great at plugging them all in at once, looking at your table, and moving on. So here we've got f of x and g of x graphed below. Nice little absolute value function here, f of x. And then looks like some kind of exponential growth there, actually decay there for g of x. So we're going to see, you know, what this question is asking next. Uh, the solutions to this, so that, that's just asking where do they cross? Okay, where these two are equal or where they cross each other. So they cross here and here. Um, the solutions are not x-intercepts. They don't cross the x-axis at those points. Uh, they're also not y-intercepts. Um, and so now we're back to, we're down to three or four. Are, they the, are the solutions to the equation x values or are they y values? Well, they're the x values when the y's are the same. That's why it's choice three. The solutions to this equation are x values when the y's are the exact same thing, which we don't care what the numbers are. It doesn't matter. Um, the key is just, you know, understanding what the question is asking. Here's a sequence. Um, you always see at least one or two questions about sequences on these regions. Uh, so let's see. So the sequence, negative 27, yada, yada, yada. So we're looking to see what is the pattern. Um, you'll see here all of these are linear. So that tells me right away I'm not looking for a common factor. I'm looking for a common difference or, or just a rate of change. And looking at my options, either it's negative 27 or it's 15. That should be pretty easy to figure out. From negative 27 to negative 12, 3 and 18, you know, we get stuck on these negatives sometimes and you don't need to. Look at the easy ones. That's 15. Boom, done. There's a slope. The question is, uh, which of these three or four is it? So you have to think, okay, well, is negative 27 the, the y-intercept or is it the first term? And that's where it can be a little bit tricky. But they're really nice, in fact, because they, they told you the first term is right there. And if you look at your formula sheet, you're given this, a of 1 plus n minus 1 times d for any arithmetic sequence. And so now we're basically done. Arithmetic, sorry. Got erased by mistake. Arithmetic, whatever. I can't spell right now. That's okay. Ignore that. So the first term is negative 27. And then plus n minus 1 times the common difference, 15. Which put 15 out front, that's fine. There's a choice right there. So for this arithmetic sequence, we use the first term and not the y-intercept, which is why it's got to be the n minus 1. If you were to work backwards, you have to find the y-intercept, which we don't need to do because this has already got the n minus 1, and we're good to go. All right, 21 here. Let's see what we've got. Data, random, average running speed decreased, the foot side decreased. So what's the relationship? So if we're looking at this, I like to make a picture. So we're talking about foot size, and we're talking about speed. So some kind of you know data here, some kind of scatter plot. So as the foot size decreased, the average running speed also decreased. So it's kind of weird how that's set. If it's decreasing with decreasing, that's actually the same thing as increasing with increasing. As one goes up, the other one goes up. So if, they, if it goes down, they both go down. So the sample, let's see, smaller foot sizes cause, you got to be careful with cause. We really don't know cause, so no. Sample of, shows a causal relationship. How, how do we know cause? Cause is one of the hardest things to prove. That's what we have science for. Math, we don't really do 